Hello YouTubers, my name is David Fields and you're watching Field Skills. Today's video we're going to talk about part of our situational preparedness or, or situational planning uh, and the idea of preparing for uh, unusual events or circumstances in life that affect our safety and, and our health uh, in an urban survival situation or setting. Now, as you can see behind me, it's raining here. I live in South Mississippi. South Louisiana is currently facing, for many people, one of these unusual events caused by Mother Nature. Flooding's going on this very day in South Louisiana, in the Baton Rouge area and all. So people needed to have planned, prepared for such events to be ready uh, when those events happen to uh, survive. It may be a short term till the floodwaters subside, but being able to uh, get home, which is part of our planning, uh, get home planning, or possibly they're at home, stay home planning, number two is a big part of that. Being able to just hunker down and wait till the floodwaters reside. Or number three, some of them's homes may be flooding and they need to have a leave home plan, the third strategy we should all have, uh, to get to a safe place. And what do they need? What knowledge, skill, and resources do they need to get there? So uh, this is a, a probably a good thing just for me to go over what I have as part of my get home plan in the event floods or some event caused me to not be able to get home. What do I have in my get home bag to help me get back to safety, get back to family uh, in the event of a natural disaster or, or a man-made disaster of some kind? So we want to talk about that. And what I've done, I've emptied my get home bag here and we're going to pack it. Most of the videos you see out there, they're unpacking the bag, what they've got in it. I'm going to do it backwards and, and pack the bag, getting all of my stuff laid out on the table. And then we're going to talk about some of the things I keep in my vehicle every day. It's always in my vehicle to uh, get home in the event I'm stranded somewhere. And everything you see here is going to tie to what I use as a checklist, spreadsheets that I've got uh, for the items, the resources I need, uh, want in certain particular kits or bags uh, there. My bushcraft kit may be different than my urban kit or my vehicle get home kit, uh, but they all relate to the core needs we have out there. Uh, and just as a reminder, I'm going to put a slide up here on the screen that shows what are our core needs. Well, it's health and safety, first of all, making sure we're physically okay. Secondly, it's controlling our body's core temperature is the second core need we have in any situation that we might find ourselves in. Thirdly, is sustenance. Do we have water? Do we have food? Hydration and energy can be key to our survival. And fourthly is rescue and communication, being able to contact people to come help us or contact people to let them know, hey, I'm okay, I'm somewhere. So that's our fourth core need. But in the checklist I just talked to you about, I have five categories. I have my four needs and these items fall in those four needs or they fall into the fifth category I have, which is tools and trade. Now tools and trade, especially tools, are going to help me. They're going to be resources to help with those other four core needs that we have in a survival situation. So let's get started keeping those five categories in mind and we're going to talk about the things I have in my get home bag. Okay guys. Here is the bag I keep in my vehicle. It's just a black tactical bag. I'm not sure who the manufacturer was. It's an inexpensive bag off of 
uh, Amazon I got. Not even sure, but uh, works very well because this is a bag ideally you would hope you never had to use, but it stays in the car. And I've got this one in black. It's for my vehicle. As you can see, I've got one in green, an identical setup as I'm going to show today that stays in my wife's vehicle uh, there. So uh, I've got one in each vehicle that is there at all times. So let me set this down out of the way and talk about this tactical bag. Now I want to mint, notice something and let's look at the outside. I keep on the outside a holster here with a mag pouch attached to it connected to the outside plus a radio pouch over here. The reason I leave those on the outside is so that if I'm grabbing this pack I use these the radio and the weapon or the handgun are never in this at all times. I've always got a weapon uh, and the radio in my vehicle, uh, but I have it for use, daily use if need be. But these are reminders for me to remind me, hey, when I'm if I'm grabbing this bag, you need to get the radio and get your weapon and ammunition. So uh, I keep my Ruger P89. I can store it in the holster, put my Balfang UV-5RA that's programmed with all the local uh, emergency channels, law enforcement, uh, hospitals, ambulance services, and what have you in there. Now, I can pull these off real quick if I don't want this carried on the back of the pouch, I can put it on my belt. Take the weapon, put it on my belt, or put it inside if I don't think I'm going to need it, but I want it with me. So I can pop these off real quick uh, if need be. But these are reminders why they're empty and on the outside to remind me to get these items when they go. I'm going to take that out for safety's sake. All right. The other thing I keep in my vehicle is my EDC pouch and it stays loose and it has a small inexpensive uh, multi-tool, a bandana, a fire kit, uh, a headlamp in there, some uh, emergency blankets, a couple of those, uh, some cordage, uh, some cargo tape, just those quick easy emergency survival things. It's laying loose down on the uh, console of my vehicle. So this would be something I would grab, plus it's got a container with it. This is just a plain military canteen with a nesting cup and stove. There's the stove, nesting cup, so these would be things that I would grab out of my vehicle if I had to do it quickly. I could grab this pack and just the canteen and have most of my core needs taken care of in a very, very short term situation. But if not, I grab this and I throw it into the pack uh, near the top with those two items. So, let's talk about some of the key ingredients from our core needs. It goes. And I'm going to jump to the second core need of shelter as we start packing this bag. And I've, as you can see, I've got a fairly large administrative type pocket here, a smaller pocket on the top, and then I've got two inside compartments, one here and the big one here, plus I've got a water bladder in the back, as you can see over here. And this is where I keep my emergency tarp, orange on one side, mylar reflective on the other, part of shelter situation, plus I love military ponchos, and this is just a plain military poncho 
has a shelter, rain uh, suit if you need be, if the weather is, you know, it's a flooding situation like today. But they stay in that water bladder pouch in the back. Fit nice and neat, don't weigh a lot, and just fit perfectly in there because I don't carry the water bladder at all times in there. So, one other item I keep in here is these are frog togs. Simple rain jacket and pants, rolled up good and tight. They can fit inside the main pouch here in case of inclement weather. I keep just an inexpensive, got this at Walmart, I think it was, Stanley Pot. But what this is, is a cook kit, but I use it as a container to keep my hydration, part of my sus sustenance core need. Uh, a Sawyer a mini water filter in there with the water bottle that comes with it. I keep some uh, coffee filters in there to help filter the water I may be getting. Uh, the breeze, I keep a couple wet fires and a lighter in there. Some uh, water purification tablets, uh, some tin foil, part of the sustenance cooking kit there, and all of this stays in this one container. So it's a sustenance container as the core need for hydration and cooking purposes if it uh, so need be. Generally, I'm probably not going to be cooking out there, but it was a nice container to keep all of this stuff conveniently in there uh, to have it all set in my get home bag. So that goes in down at the bottom. One of the things you may not need all the time, but it is there. Next item to core temperature control is clothing and I keep a pair of underwear, a t-shirt, some extra socks in my bag. Just in case I need to add a pair of warm socks, they stay down in the bottom of this bag. As part of communications, I've got my Baofeng radio, it may have my, will most likely have one of my most useful tools uh, in the, uh, uh, in my kit is my cell phone, and I may need to charge the battery, so I have a solar charger here. This is a power add, power your life, solar panel, 20 watt, and it stays in the back of the main compartment there, zipped up in a bag in there so that I can charge my devices that we have. So that's the main area, well, let me see. As part of my cook kit, I keep uh, one of these sham wow type rags that I keep in the front pocket here along with that's part of, I guess, cooking or possibly hygiene kit, but I also keep a shemog in there. It's part of my clothing cover uh, element, helping with controlling my body core temperature. So that's about all I leave in that back main compartment because I want some room to add items that I may need, that I might have in my vehicle that I want to throw in there or items that I collect along the way as uh, I'm headed home. Because see, if I were to be stranded at work, I'm five and a half miles from my house. Very reasonable distance if I had to walk and hike. Uh, I may not need to put shelter. I would walk straight through if it were at night and all. 
couple hours, three hours at the most, I'm home. But I've got things that I would need uh, in case I was hindered some way. But what other items do I have in my four needs? One of the key things that we always uh, want to have as part of our health and safety, our first core need, is my first aid kit. And I'll do a separate video on the items we keep in the first aid kit. But it goes in this lower front pocket. Easy access in case I need it. Also, health and safety is personal uh personal hygiene, personal care items. And in here is things from toilet paper to hand sanitizer, uh, bug spray, medicines, ibuprofen, aspirin, uh, diarrhea medicine. Uh, uh, what else we got in there? Uh, lip balm, uh, earplugs, just a variety of little personal aid and uh, medicines as part of our health and safety core needs would go in here. Easy access, easy to get to in this lower path. Other items. This is part of my shelter. There's some cordage in there. A couple more Mylar blankets, some storm matches. Just in these little mesh bags uh, that I have here to go in in the event uh, we need something and I'm going to put it in that middle zipper section down at the bottom. Shelter would be one of the latter things I would need. I talked about earlier needing tools. Tools being the fifth area of that checklist that I have for uh, my meeting my core needs. And in my tool bag I have a lot of different little things. Uh, I have a lockpick set uh, right there, cordage, uh, a small crescent wrench, uh, a T, a uh, stem key for uh, turning on water in an urban environment, maybe at a, a restaurant or something. There are places on my way home I might be. Uh, a sharpener, a screwdriver with a changeable uh, Phillips head, flat head bit. Uh, my uh, saw uh, is in there. Cargo tape. Uh, we'll do a separate study on our video on all of these tools in the bag, but uh, just a toolkit comes along. Simple things I may need along the way getting home. And it's going down in this metal bag middle section. Now I am down to the small stuff. And what are some of the items that I need? One thing is admit admin uh, items. Uh, paper, pencils, uh, and they can go right here. I keep them in one of these mesh bags. For a uh, Easy access if I need to make notes, leave a note or something for uh, those on the way. That's going to lock in this zipper pouch. One of the things that stays in this small front easy access pouch is some food, a food bags up there. This one I need to restock. But it's got almonds, uh, protein bars, coffee, drink mix, uh, tea bags in there. Uh, and like I say, for a short, odds are how sh uh, quickly I would be able to get home if I'm stranded somewhere. This would probably be enough, but I may want to add some more to that. Also, quick access items. In this upper pouch, I want my headlamp. Uh, just an inexpensive headlamp. This is an energizer, but it's got everything but a, a strobe function on it, but it works well, and I'm going to have it in there if I'm having to walk at night. Part of 
rescue and navigation is a pair of Bushnell inexpensive binoculars. But I, maybe I want to uh, recon an area before I go uh, to see if it's going to work. So I will keep that in that pocket. Let's talk about the last few items. One of the things, I wear glasses. Uh, have to to see, but I keep, I think I've got three or four sets of these cocoons. I've got them in all the vehicles, but I keep one in these packs that will go on over my glasses. They're polarized sunglasses in the event uh, I'm walking in the day and need those. That's something, quick access item I want at the top in there. Couple glow sticks uh, goes in there. This is a green one and a yellow one uh, just in case I need that light at night. Uh, head net. We're in South Mississippi. If it's the summer in the evening I'm walking home mosquitoes I may want to throw on a head net. That'll stay in there. I do keep a small, I love Altoids 10s. It's the bushcraft in me. But uh, an Altoids fire kit uh, with some uh, cotton ball. I've done a video on these. A fire striker. Uh, plus I've got other a fire kit in that in this kit uh, that I talked about earlier that's my everyday kit. But, uh, quick start a fire situation can go in there. Plus, I've got for navigation, uh, rescue, uh, self-rescue would be a compass and a small signal mirror that goes into our pack. And the last thing that I have as part of cover element is a pair of mechanics gloves and they would stay probably right here in the top of this easy to grab to access I do want to change this out this goes in this pocket the admin kit Just to show our final finalizing our setup, got my radio in there, strapped down. A weapon can be carried on plus on the outside I didn't mention this, I carry a, a defiant flashlight. Uh, just an inexpensive one, but uh, is available there, and I keep it hooked on the front. Uh, something, if it's at night, quickly, I've got a lot I can get to very easily through that. Of course, I mentioned I would be grabbing my canteen probably. It would go into my upper pouch. Just a couple features I've added to this uh, on here. At the top on my zippers, hope you can see this, I have a small line hooked to the zipper. So at night, if I'm looking here and I need, can't find what, I've got light, an easy light source to look into my bag to find what I'm looking for if it is dark uh, through there. Okay guys, my get home bag stays in my truck. We've talked about the core needs it meets. I've got items in there for my health and safety, first aid kit, personal care items uh, in there along with protection as part of my health and safety. I've got a weapon with me, an ammunition through that. I've got uh, core temperature control items. I've got clothing items in my get home bag to help me there. I've got shelter items if I need those. Uh, the tarps, the poncho, 
the uh, emergency blankets. Uh, I've got uh, fire making capabilities. Uh, uh, in most of my in my water kit, to my fire kit, to my EDC kit that goes with it, I've got multiple ways to make fire if I need to. Uh, sustenance, I've got water filtration for water, cooking items, food items with me, water purification methods, all to handle the hydration and the energy needs I may need to get home. And then in the uh, rescue and communications, I, I've got my cell phone would be with me. I've got radio communications. I've got navigational equipment with a compass, signaling mirror. Uh, I didn't mention I keep on the front here uh, just a Coglins. Uh, it's got a small, I don't know if you can see that, compass, magnifying light comes out from the side of the thermometer plus a whistle. Part of uh, personal safety, but it also is rescue of uh, uh, communication with people to let them know where I'm at if they're looking at me. And then I talked about the fifth area that works with those four core need areas, which is tools and trade. Uh, and in that, I've got a small tool bag, I've got cutting tools, I've got cordage, I've got cargo tape, all fall under tools, plus I've got some basic tools, a wrench, uh, a multi-tool, uh, uh, screwdrivers, things like that if I needed that. So I've got tools to help me meet my four core needs uh, all in this pack. But there are certain things I keep in my truck that uh, I may throw in uh, depending on the situation. One of it is I can strap some rope. Uh, if I felt like I needed it, it's always in the truck. I can put it inside the pack or strap it to the outside. A hank of rope. Uh, I've got my uh, clean canteen with a nesting cup, cup plus some fire making materials in here and, and shelter materials. If I thought I needed uh, this to go along, I could attach it. It has molly strapping on it so I can add to this kit if I need it. I keep in this one with the blue tag on it, I keep my MSR water filtration system. Stays in one of those canteen holders. If I were going to be going or had more multiple people that I was needing to take care of, with my wife and daughter, we're traveling in her vehicle. I might have this in the car as an additional item uh, to process more water if we needed it through there. So, uh, plus I also keep a heavy. Uh, this is the Shrade uh, SCHF9 uh, knife. Uh, just a good shopping bush craft style knife uh, that I could throw in, lash to the side if I needed a, a little better uh, tool with that or I was going to be in an area I thought I may need a bigger knife, more of a machete type situation. And it has the knife and a multi-tool attached to it. So there are a lot of things I've got in my vehicle that this bag, I could grab it as is right now and walk five miles and might never even have to open it up. But if I did, I would have items to help my survivability in that trek. Uh, but maybe I'm out of town. I've headed up to the next town down and stranded at night. Vehicle breaks down, can't get in touch with anybody in a dead zone. I need to hike to an exit to get to cell service or something. I get out of the vehicle, I'm going to take this with me as I'm hiking up the road. And we've all seen people that have broken down on the highways having to walk so somebody stops to help them or they get to a next exit or to a, uh, a place where people are to get some help. So uh, it's preparing for those situations, whatever it may be. But have some items with you in your vehicle uh, where you can get to them. Uh, for urban survival situations, urban survival events that may happen.
uh, whatever they are, to help you survive, to help you to get to safety, to get home. Uh, I hope you've enjoyed it. It's been kind of erratic and uh, the items, and uh, I hope that you'll subscribe to the channel. Uh, if you've got some comments, I'm sure there's some ideas you would have and say, hey, you need this in the bag, or, or you don't need that. And, and it's a living process. This thing is constantly evolving and being updated uh, uh, on that checklist I mentioned uh, to you. And I, and I may do a video just on the checklist uh, system I have. Uh, I'm always seeing some of you other YouTubers out there that will mention something, and I, hey, that's a good thing to do. I put it on my spreadsheet checklist and I may add it to a kit or have it uh, as an alternative in a vehicle or a cash location, whatever it may be. But uh, just having a bag uh, and that will allow you to meet your core needs when an event happens that you are stranded or need to uh, get somewhere safe, uh, it's good to have to prepare and have resources to uh, to help you along the way. Uh, like I said, if you will, subscribe, comment, like the videos, uh, but I hope you'll join me next time uh, as we uh, talk some more about situational prepping, situational planning, uh, and uh, we'll probably talk in a little more in-depth about some of these items and uh, those areas, items on that checklist uh, that we have. Uh, I end my videos with a quote, and for this urban survival series, I'm using a quote from Benjamin Franklin, where Franklin said, If you fail to prepare, then you're prepared to fail. And so join us as we prepare for urban survival situations here on Field Skills.